Hey, what's happening? It's Chris Redbeard videos, and I am bringing you yet another awesome conversation. So I'm trying to integrate artist interviews into this channel, and uh, I've just been encountering one challenge after another, one technical glitch after another. And if you all remember back at the very beginning of my channel in October, I'm going to try. All right, that's a good way to start. This has been an evolutionary process. So we've now evolved. We got a new microphone. I got a new camera. I got all kinds of new stuff on a computer here. So hopefully this is coming across well. I'm going to be live streaming and doing all that type of stuff. But I'm not here to talk about that right now. I'm here to talk about something way, way cooler than that. And that is the amazing band between the Berry to me and my guest on the channel, Mr. Tommy Rogers. <laughs> Between the Baronomies about to set off on a career spanning tour, which was scheduled for 2020, where they were going to play two full sets, an evening with style show, where they were going to do a full career spanning set, and then they were going to play their album, The Great Misdirect, which is where my fandom of Between the Baronomies started, was right when that right before that album came out. I actually picked up the album Colors, which was the album before, but like at the tail end of it. And then I really got into The Great Misdirect and everything they've done since. They're also due to come out with a brand new album called Colors 2. So this is doubly exciting for me that they're doing a sequel to my favorite album of theirs. And I'm going to see a career spanning show where they're going to play potentially all of their phenomenal music. I, I can't even fathom what they're going to play, but I will tell you. There is a video coming that will address that very, very shortly in the next few days. That tour is set to go off the first week of August. Colors 2 is set to come out August 20th, but you're going to hear all about that in my conversation right now with Mr. Thomas Giles Rogers of Between the Barrier to Me right now. <laughs> Super excited that I woke up this morning and what do I see in my inbox? Colors 2. Oh, nice. Wow, man. And I, I only got halfway through it. I haven't it's been a able lot. to listen to the whole thing. Oh, it, it is a lot to ingest. But let me tell you, it's uh, it, it's pretty fantastic. So tell me, um, just first and foremost, how are your feelings on this album just in general right now? Um, well, I mean there's a lot of emotions with this record that, that normally don't happen. And I think it's because of our circumstances last year, you know, we, we were putting up, you know, everyone was putting up a very um, unique situation. And, you know, we, I think we really put all that to the side and created really good art out of it. You know, I, I think it's, I mean, everybody, every band says our newest records are, you know, our best work or whatever, but I don't know. I, I feel like, really really strongly about this record as far as i i think i think it's just after all these years i think we're finally like we're still pushing ourselves yet it feels new it, it, it like shows the history of the band somehow and the music and, it, and, it, and all this stuff happened really organically and i just i think it's some of the best stuff we've ever done and i it, there's there's a lot of more pride than i normally have like there's always some pride just because of how much work we put into our music and what we do but this one was just next level um, as far as the time and energy we put into it and, and the payoff, the payoff has been great. I, I think like just the fact that people are starting to finally hear some stuff and we we've gotten some great responses, you know, it's, it's kind of making us ease a little bit and feel, know that our instincts are feeling good. So yeah, all around, well, and, we're, and we're very happy. Don't go, don't go and i know a lot of uh a lot of artists it's kind of almost like a cliche at this point where they say yeah. oh our newest work is our favorite which, our, which it should be impressive. if it's if it's not that i feel like something's off you know if if you're one of those well, bands where you're just riding the coattails of everything you've done in the past it's 
like a lot of bands when they release new music it's like okay they're just kind of doing it because you have to do it right um, right no and it's kind of it's kind of part but you i know, agree with you there but w- what i was gonna say was you guys in my opinion anyway as a fan and just as someone who is an appreciator of music you guys have every album it's like something it, you bring something new you know it, it's every album is something different like uh, automata was like so significantly different yeah. than anything that had come before coma ecliptic was so significantly different than anything that had come before and it's and it's remarkable to me so which leads me to the next question and i did read the press release so i have mm-hmm. the luxury of knowing what you said but seeing as colors was not necessarily a lyrical concept like a lot of your other work yeah I'm assuming that colors too is also not a lyrical concept as well. So it's what, not. so what leads it to being essentially a sequel? Well, you know, the, the idea was we, we wanted to really capture that mind frame we were in when with colors one, you know, it was, it was a, one of those points in our careers where we didn't quite know where we fit in. Like we didn't know, like we were really in search of our identity. And like, at that point we finally gathered like a lot of comfort amongst each other with writing because that was the second record we wrote with this uh lineup but it was the first one like i feel like we really kind of understood each other and and really worked together really well You know, we just kind of wanted to to go back to that feeling like where we have everything in the world to prove we like there's no rules like anything goes just put it all out there like l- just go as hard as you possibly can and put as much work as you possibly can and you know find your identity again and like you know, I feel like a band when you're around as long as us, you, you you have these constant stages of like starting over, you know, mentally. It's not like you start over in every sense, but just mentally, you're right. like, all right, we're this is like a new beginning in a way. And, th- and that's how we really felt with this album in the in the pandemic, obviously, obviously, like really helped that, you know, because we decided we were going to do Colors 2 before the pandemic. But then once that happened, it all just really like it made sense almost in a in a way that was conceptual um it, mm. it just it made that kind of part of the concept and and part of what we were trying to achieve you know with colors one with this and and then once we started diving into music and realizing that you know where we are now we're able to we've gotten good at our craft in the way that we can we can throw in like easter eggs from from colors and we can make the album flow in a way where it kind of hints it how the the record of colors flows and do all these kind of little things that are exciting for the fans that do look into stuff like that and um yeah we went we went for it with that and i think the outcome was really cool and we pulled it off you know it was one of those things where it was always like yeah we want to do colors too but you know we, we were always like we can always change that if if it's not working but right you know once once we started diving in and, and really writing we were like all right this is the right you just kind of know if something's the right choice or not, and, and it instantly was. So I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad we did it. You know. And you guys have definitely taken all the right <clears throat> steps. So, did you feel like it, now when you say? like a new beginning or, or whatever. Was it like with Automata, like you guys were done with the concept thing for a while? I, done I personally telling this- was, I was personally done lyrically. I mean, as a band, we enjoy writing music that, you know, is free flowing and, you know, goes basically feels like a story. You know, that's just kind of how we write. We love that. Right. Um, well, and Colors so 1 we was can kind of like that. So. Exactly. That was one, yeah. that was like the first record we did that. So, and that was the album we were like, okay, this, this is the way we, we really enjoy working. So yeah, we, we definitely did that with uh, this new one. <clears throat> but yeah, after Automata, I mean, even during Automata, when I was writing lyrics, I was just like, man, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm starting to feel boxed in. Um, and I'm starting to feel like it's, it's expected of me to write these stories. Mm. and i didn't want to get to the point where i wasn't wanting to write the stories i was just doing it because it was a, it, it was what was expected of me and that's never been the style of bt band that's never been how we roll you know we just kind of 
we do what feels good for us. So, you know, before we even started talking about close two, I mentioned to a few of the guys, like, I don't think I'm going to write a concept record. I'm just going to kind of take it song by song and go from there. You know, I want to just, I want to have that freedom and I don't want to be kind of, you know, stuck within some story. Um, and then when the colors two idea came up, it was, it was perfect for me. Cause I was like, Oh, this is a great opportunity because that's how I treated lyrics and colors one. So um, I really enjoyed that part of it that I was able to kind of approach the lyrics differently and, and kind of get a little more personal. And because of what we were all dealing with and, and mm. all that last year, I think it was a perfect record to do that and kind of get a little more in depth with myself and shit I'm feeling and stuff. So yeah, sure. it, it, it all, it all uh, worked itself out. <clears throat> yeah. So was that the um, kind of the catalyst for the, career spanning tour was just okay closing the book here moving on to the next thing let's do in a, a way, career spanning tour it, it was it was more that it was the 20 year anniversary we're like it's such a it's a crazy number to even think about yeah, um absolutely. just because it's gone it's gone by so fast but and um, also considering the type of band you are like who thought yeah. that a band so extreme as you will never would yeah. be and you're still growing i think your fan yeah. base is still growing it's 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 remarkable it really is yeah i mean we that's where we you know we've really realized especially over the last few years how lucky we are in the sense that our fans are a always there for us no matter what and b they're excited for us to try new things you know they're not they don't frown on the fact that we're you know, that every album doesn't sound the same. Every song doesn't sound the same. You know, like a lot of bands don't get that. So we're lucky. And yeah, I mean, the 20 year thing, it was just one of those things where we just had to celebrate it in some way. Um, because like you said, you know, we, we've never been the a type of band that looks really five years down the line. We're kind of a year by year band, like just taking it one step at a, at a time and see what happens. And that's how we always rolled with it. And you know, yeah, we never expected this to, I mean, when we started, we just did it and we're like, yeah, we'll probably write an album or two and go back go back to our shitty jobs. And that would be that. <laughs> but, you know, luckily it's, it's, it's been something that's grown and become, you know, a, a, a thing. So it's, it's cool. And, you know, we did an evening with tour in Europe in 2019. So that was kind of a way to test the waters to see if it was something that would work. And if we could do it physically, that was a big, uh what if um for yeah. us but yeah it went well and so we were like yeah let's do a 20-year tour and obviously that's been pushed back and it's uh starting in two weeks actually which is it's we, we will be, crazy to we think. will we will be there <laughs> we awesome. will be there in philly actually we'll be uh seeing that that's show gonna, so that's now. gonna be a fun show at tla it's gonna be good yeah, we're excited. We're super Goodbye, excited just to get it's it's gonna be uh it's gonna be my second concert back. I'm going to my first concert coming up this Saturday, going to see oh, really? Sticks. Going to see oh, Sticks cool. actually. So I'm kind of excited about that. And uh cool. and then you guys are the second ones. You want to talk about two opposite ends of the progressive spectrum. <laughs> Yikes. Um and then <laughs> so can we expect so there's set lists everywhere from that Europe show tour. Yeah. Can we expect similar set lists, something completely different? A little bit. You I mean, I, I can't remember specifically what we played on that tour. I mean, um, but it, but it, yeah, we're doing a set that is kind of a, you know, it's a song throughout our, our entire career. Um, even some really old stuff. I was going to say, so, can we expect to hear at least one song from each album? Is that how this is going to go or? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I believe there's All a song right. from, from every album. Yeah. All right. Well, that's, that's a good thing. And then, yeah. so, so then do you guys already have plans to, you know, when you wrap up the career spanning tour, is it just going to kind of flow right into a colors to support or there's we're, just we're no figuring plans right out, now? We're, we're, there's no plans as of now regarding the rest of the year. Um, but we're sorting out next year right now. So hopefully we'll have, you know, news sooner than later. Yeah, how, how epic a tour would it be if you did colors one and two back to back? <laughs> God, <laughs> the epic for the fans would be detrimental for our bodies. You, you guys would be dead. God. So, so just diving into the album a bit. Um, I like I said, I only got to listen to half of it. Um, yeah. but from what I heard already, like, so as a singer and as a vocalist, uh, you know, you are one of the most interesting like because i'm a singer so i always latch on to the vocalist that's like something yeah. i always and even like you know i i could never scream the way that you do or some of the other you know pros in the game but like it seems that like it, it, i don't know if this was a purposeful thing and i think i've asked you this before but like during coma ecliptic you guys caught a lot of flack 
mm-hmm. or like, you know, it wasn't as heavy or it wasn't as screamy or whatever, <laughs> like, and the whole thing. And I, and I remember thinking to myself, I'm like, well, this, A, that's just not true. But B, maybe yeah. it was just a different production. But this album, and then even with like Automata, like you were like, yeah, you know what? Fuck that. Watch this. Yellow eyes are And like songs like Yellow Eyes and Condemned to the Gallows and now on the new one, it's just, it's bombastic. And you do a little bit of like, are you constantly training or is this just, you've just learned how to do it? Like, do you take lessons? Do you, do you do something technically to make yourself better at this age to keep going and doing this? Or is it just Um, something that's happening for you? No, I, I, I don't do lessons or anything. It's a, it's a lot of mental stuff. I mean, especially for this new record, for instance. I did have that feeling like, okay, this is like a new beginning. I need to treat this like, not like I've never done this before, but I need to get, I need to get better at this, you know? And, and in the past, it's always been like that for singing, but not really screaming. I, I feel like I always kind of put screaming on the, on the back burner and, and never really, really thought too much about it. And with this album, I kind of, I was, I was like, just like anybody, I was watching like YouTube videos on how to scream, like literally, literally stuff that everybody does, you know, and I, just to kind of understand what people are doing out there and what different techniques people are using and seeing if anything, if there's anything that jumps out at me that, that's helpful um, and kind of spend a little more time focusing on the scream and, and making it, you know, something that felt more powerful. Like, I feel like the screaming on this new re- record is probably some of the, the, the best sounding stuff in, in, in that era. I mean, that area. Um, Absolutely. I've done, I, I agree. I've done it that I've done it a long time. Like with the Tom and I tried to be like, the Tom and I wanted to be really raw. Like I used a, condenser i was you know i hardly did i didn't do a lot of double you know scream stuff and i was just like this is my voice this is what it sounds like it's, it's yellow raw. eyes like, blows me away dude yeah. yellow eyes that, <laughs> that song the the first verse is just yeah that's that to me is like that was like that's it that's the shit right there and it was <laughs> it, it got me and then this new one you're right it, it it kills man it just kills cool yeah and i just tried to like you know really really i mean i always spend a lot of time with vocals but i you know, I spent, you know, I bought a little vocal booth to put in my room and, you know, I, I always demo songs, but this time I like heavily, heavily demoed and like tried different things and worked on, you know, my screaming and my singing. It was, it was just a lot of like trial and error. I had a lot of time too, you know, <laughs> which, which, which <laughs> as we all did. Yeah. As we all did, you know, so I was like, let's make the best of it. And, you know, aside from actually writing the music with the guys and working on lyrics and stuff, I was like, I really need to focus on writing the vocals and doing it because that's always one of the last things I do. And sometimes it kind of happens too quickly or I don't spend enough time just because there's been all this other stuff going on that, that took up my time. So yeah, I wanted to make sure and, and give it the love it needs. And, and hopefully, hopefully uh, people will th- think it kicks ass. <laughs> and i also and i also notice on on every successive <clears throat> album as it as you go down the line your keyboard work is becoming more and more prevalent as well um is that also something that like again like were you classically trained as a keyboardist no, as a piano I'm not, player i'm not a very good keyboardist at all i mean a, a big part of a big part of it's dan dan's a really good keyboard player and he really he's really he's really good he writes a lot um huh you know, Dan and I, we, yeah, we have a, we work really well together working on key stuff. And um, that's the fun thing about this band. We all, you know, most of us, almost all of us play guitar really well. You know, we, you know, when we write stuff, we write like full, you know, when I write around, I write something, I write guitars and bass and, you know, keys and vocal, you know, and same, Dan does the same thing. Blake does the same, you know, Paul. So it's all mm-hmm. like, you know, that's what's cool about this band is we can kind of like send a big picture and then let, from there it's like okay this is cool but let's change this or you know 
somebody obviously I, everybody has their strengths and weaknesses and they can add to that or take away from it to make it better and, and that's what's cool and like with key stuff like especially since coma um you know we just we really started having fun with canos and you know the the, the old analog stuff and just getting more diving more in the software and especially with my solo stuff i got really he heavy into the software side of it and so yeah just incorporating all that in the bt bam and and like i said dan with the stuff he writes is so cool and you know it's just a it's a nice uh storm of cr creativity that just i don't know it's, it's just become a big part of our sound like not just guitar riffs like we we've we've learned to like be able to make guitar riffs the center piece when it needs to be and they, they can fall back when they need to be as well when something else needs to shine and that take that takes time to learn especially when you're a band that you know we grew up just you would write a guitar riff and then you put drums to it and that was that um but you know we've we've grown a lot in in regards to that with the writing Yeah, no, for sure. And like, I, again, I haven't been able to do the deep dive into the album and really listen to it through headphones and the whole thing. But like, yeah. I think it was the, the third track, uh, uh, Revolution something or another. Yeah. Um, I, I swear, did I hear harp? I think I heard a harp yeah. or like, yeah. and there's like, there's all kinds of like, so you guys are like, really like, it's no joke when I read in the press release that, you know, they're still going hard and heavy and they're still expanding their sound to this day. Yeah. Like you guys are truly doing that. Was there a harp? <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah, that, that's one of those things. I think that was a Blake thing. Uh, you know, it's just one of those things, you, you know, we're, we're always, always tweaking. Like the writing process is, is it probably would never end if we didn't, that's a good thing. Deadlines are good. Like it's a good thing to have deadlines because <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. You'll have a part that's, you know, this simple thing. And then before you know it, people have added all this stuff and it's become something totally, com completely different. But yeah, as, as long as it works, it works. You know, we're, we're, we've gotten really good at knowing what, when something works or when it doesn't, you know, there's a lot of cutting and a lot of like, eh, you know, we wrote a lot more music for this album than we put on the album like this I is probably no the most <laughs> i mean we normally don't do that we normally don't have a lot of extra music but this we just i don't know if it was last year or whatever we just wrote everybody was writing so much you know and mm. it, it it was the it, for me i think it was the most collaborative record we've, we've ever done you know as a, as a group which i think you know i, I love that I, I think i mean i love i think that's one of the great pleasures and and being in this band is the writing process and, and working together sounds so. like it and then it repeats again yeah. sounds like it and and so speaking of overindulgence and how that can get a little crazy uh <laughs> so with fix the error and the yeah. you know the the quadruple drum solo situation What, what what happened there? Was it just like, did Blake walk in one day and go, I have this 95 measure drum solo. And then <laughs> all of a sudden they were like, well, maybe we should ask some other people. Like, so how did that come about? Like, what, what was the story there? Well, first of all, we didn't walk in anywhere. This was the first album that we- Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, but it was crazy. We didn't see each other until we walked into the studio. This is crazy. the first time that's ever happened. But um, yeah, I mean, we, we had written Revolution and out of Revolution, Blake sent this like, gospel i think he called it gospel power punk or something and that that was like the beginning skeleton of uh fix the air and it, you know it, the the shift from revolution to fix the air was uh, it's still one of my favorite moments of the record you know it's, it's just such a nice tonal shift and and uh, i think on the original demo he sent like a drum solo idea and he was like i want to do like a drum shed thing with a few guys um and we, I mean, it, it was one of the, the, the cool thing about this band is nothing's, you're never like, what? We're always like, yeah, let's, let's, <laughs> let's do, do it. it. <laughs> you know, but for, for us, it was one of those things where we just wanted to make sure it was guys that, um, you know, either we, we, we know really well and we've been touring with forever, 
good friends or somebody that we've, you know, grown up listening to, you know, we just wanted to make sure it was the right people, not just grabbing names that would help sell records and whatever. Right. Right. And, you know, you know, we lucked out all three guys that we wanted said yes. And uh, we didn't even hear the solos till we were almost done with the record in the studio. We finally got, I think yeah. Ken, so Ken solo last towards the end of the session. And yeah, we didn't tweak it at all. It was all perfect. You know, it was awesome. Wow. We, we, we wanted to get that by right. So yeah. And, and Mike, Mike Portnoy, you know, we obviously grew up listening to Dream Theater and, you know, he was a huge advocate of, of Colors One. You know, he really helped us back then by getting us on tour with Dream Theater then. And, and I think it was his album of the year in 2012 or something. So yeah, wow. we, we felt like that was a perfect kind of, you know, thing to get him on it. And then Naveen we've toured with for, I mean, God, longer than this lineup has even been around like hmm. he, he's been he's been around forever so we've toured with him been great buds i've worked with him on solo stuff and and ken was in you know a band called candaria which we're you know we just yeah. ob obsessed over you know so That's and his guy. drumming his drumming in particular yeah, I have a yeah poster yeah. up there i have a poster up there they played in yeah. new york city a few years back so yeah uh, they played with good candaria. tiger and and it was yeah. a great show they're awesome yeah i love candaria so yeah, I always said it's interesting that you, you know, the Portnoy Dream Theater connection. I always said that Dream Theater and Between the Buried and Me are like the yin and the yang of prog metal because they're all like melodic and yeah. like you guys are not. But like you, you guys seem to like write similarly at times, you know, just the way that everything is so epic and yeah. big and, yeah. you know, and, and you go through these winding, masterful musical genres. And they never get dull because the weirdest thing about me as a prog metal fan, I hate instrumentals. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't like them. Like, but yeah. I never get bored of between the buried to me. I never get bored of dream theater. And that's kind of how I always put it together in my brain, you know? So I, I think that's interesting that here he comes just shows up on one of your albums. I think that's cool. I also <laughs> think it's, I also think it's interesting that you mentioned, um, Fix the Error was a Blake brought it in and you said it was a power punk type of thing. Is that what you said? <laughs> I mean, that, that was just what he l labeled the file. I think that's was, yeah. Well, the reason why that's yeah. interesting is because the aforementioned son that I spoke to you about, my 20 year old son, mm -hmm. he's trying to convince me and my other son that it sounds punk to him. And I'm like, dude, I don't, I'm not hearing it. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> it's, it's I'm got like, a little, a little, yeah. I mean, for, <laughs> for us, especially. I mean, I, I don't think. <laughs> Yeah, for VT Bam, it's pretty punk. Yeah, and it's got, you know, I think the powers was, you know, because it's got that power metal section, um, which <laughs> which came out so cool. Uh, I think I believe Paul wrote that section. And, you know, there's, if you listen closely, there's like banjos and all types of weird stuff behind it. So. Yeah, no, we, are, we, are, actually, are... we actually did a mix of that uh without uh, electric guitar and it just it's <laughs> it sounded insane like if we ever do a, <laughs> an, sometimes we do like album dive through on our twitch if we ever do that with this album we'll definitely solo that out because it's it's really funny it's like power we'll metal blue, it it's like power metal bluegrass or something it's cool <laughs> we'll have to check that out for sure so i i guess one of the last questions is on this career spanning tour like how much of this album are you going to play, if any at all? Um, we're probably, just gonna, uh, probably one song at least. Yeah, we, we don't want it to be like the main focus. You know, we still wanted this this tour to be all about you know the career and the great misdirect and all that because we we don't want to change up the tour just because it got pushed back. You know, right? You know, so, yeah. how hard is it? How hard is it to not? Because <laughs> you know well, you want to play the new well, stuff, right? We do, but mentally, I mean, it, it's. Just, like when you learn this many songs, like you, there's only, I mean, it's really at the point, like two, the two sets we're doing, uh, it'd be tough to put anything else in there in our brains. Like it's oversaturation. Huh? Yeah. It's just, it's crazy. Yeah. So you had mentioned before we started uh, the interview when we were talking off, uh, off air, 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 <laughs> um, about meet and greets. So you yeah. guys are doing a special type of thing for meet and greets on this tour. So explain yeah. that to us. Tell us what that's about. Yeah, we're doing it. It's on uh, btbamvip.com. Yeah, we're doing it ourselves. It's just, it's, you know, we wanted to, we felt like this tour was the tour to do it, obviously. And obviously with, with restrictions, what they are, we're, we're still making it work. Um, we're, you know, hand signed poster every day. Our original demos we pressed on cassette 
which I think is, that's really cool for me. Cause I remember yeah. actually going to Kinko's and printing out the cassette, you know, the layouts and putting them, you know, Paul and I put them in our, in our apartment and, you know, selling at shows for $2 or whatever. Super but yeah, cool. so, so, so it's cool to have that. And then, um, yeah, we're doing like a Q and a thing for an hour with the fans and then a big group picture. But, uh, yeah, we, we worked it out. So we're, we're going to be on the stage. Crowd's going to be on the, on the ground, just like a regular show. So that's, the, you know, that way we're all kind of distanced, but yeah, we're going to make it, we're going to make it work. So it's going to be cool. But yeah, if anybody right. wants, if you, it's for people, it's only for people that bought tickets already and it's a btbandvip.com. So nice. Excellent. And, uh, I have your vinyl coming. The album comes out August 20th. I already yeah. ordered one. I was one yeah. of the lucky few to got one. I, 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 cool. I get a sense that you guys had no idea that it was going to sell that fast. We didn't know it would be that crazy. Yeah. I mean, the la last year when we did all those remix and remasters, we kind of saw the the vinyl craze happening before our eyes, you know. But we didn't expect um, that night for sure. It was crazy. I think it it's going to be. I think it's going to. I was be the one. Right, I was the. I was the one running everything, and it, I was. I was one of the more stressful moments <laughs> in, in a long time. <laughs> when when our site went down, I was just like, "Oh my fucking god!" All right. <laughs> Yeah, I get a sense that you guys are in for uh, a push like you've never seen before uh, with this Hopefully, album. I just, yeah, cool. I, you know, first off, when it seems that whenever Jose and Sirius Satellite Radio, who I've worked for in the past, yeah. um, when they put their kind of stamp of approval on something, all of a sudden it's like everybody all of a sudden is paying attention. And then on top of it, to put out what I've heard already. And like I said before, I've only heard half of it. Yeah, I think this is going to be one of those albums that people are going to go. How did this sell so many copies? What the fuck? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, this is crazy music, and yet it's going to, and it's going to be huge. Cool. So I'm excited. I'm excited for you guys, man. I'm totally awesome. excited. I appreciate um, it. August 20th colors two comes out the tour starts. What did you say? The August 2nd or something? Uh, third, August 3rd, third. Third. August 3rd. Third. Where are you guys starting? Do you remember? Atlanta, Atlanta, August 3rd, Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta. All right, cool. Yep. So good luck on the tour. Thank you, man. Good luck Appreciate on it. anything else. Is there, is, is there anything else you want to throw out there? Do you have any solo stuff coming out anytime soon or is I this it? Is it BT I, bam? I mean, it's been BTB. I wrote and recorded another EP last year that's done. I just, I don't, I sometimes forget about it. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll release it at some point. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm not, because I don't want to put it out right now. Every, you know, right. I want to I focus on all this. But yeah, I assume probably later in the year. It's a second, ever... second half to the Feel Better EP that I did. The Do you ever intend, I don't know, have you ever toured on any of your solo stuff? And do you I did ever five, intend I did to? five shows, like 2011, maybe, or something like okay. that. Is but that something yeah, you'll, other, think you'll ever that, do again? It would be cool. It's just, I don't know, finances, making it work. You know, at yeah. this point in my, in my life, it's hard to like leave for a, a, lot of, a long period of time and not come home with money. Right, um, right. It, it's just tough for me to do that. So, yeah, if, if I can make it work, I hopefully uh, i'll make it work but yeah it'd, well, be, it'd be it'd be really fun to play all that stuff live you know i think it'd be really cool for those of you out there looking for tommy rogers solo stuff you won't find it under tommy rogers it's under thomas giles that's where it's at it's interesting it's different than between the barrier to me for the most part and yeah it's pretty fucking cool as far as i'm concerned but you know thanks man some people might think different it's up to you <laughs> to decide tommy yeah, that's, rogers that's life Tommy Rogers, you're the man. Thank you so much for your time. You have no idea like how geeky and giddy I am about the fact that I got to talk to you face to face. That's super cool. Um, and uh, we'll see you out there, man. We'll see you in Philly. Awesome. Awesome, man. We'll see you then. Right. Thanks. Thank you, Tom. Right. Yeah, no worries, man. Have a good one.
stop this. Stop. It never stops. <laughs>